Some good energy for me, some good energy for you. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Shelby of Shelby and the Book Club, and today we are lighting incense. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about books you guys seem to love when I do book reviews um so today we will be talking all things Yonder by Jabari Asim which was in my February TBR and when I tell you I loved every second of this book I loved every second of this book so if you would like to hear it here we go okay so Yonder by Jabari Asim I absolutely recommend this book um, and I honestly feel like it's the first book that I've read in a while that I feel like the synopsis actually matches the story. Um, I, you guys have heard me say plenty of times that I feel like whoever wrote the synopsis for a lot of books, they just be lying. But I guess I can't really say that because as an avid reader, sometimes the synopsis doesn't necessarily match. But reading, I feel like, is all about perspective. And I feel like the person that you are at the moment, the way that you're perceiving things in the moment really depends, or not depends, but really takes a big part in how you receive a book, right? And not just with books, but with your feelings in general. It really plays a big part in how you receive things. If you're in a good mood, if you are more, you know, the glass is half full opposed to half empty, um, you may receive things a lot differently than you would um, when you're feeling a little bit less than and all that kind of stuff. But I really do feel like when it says in the cover, the water dancer meets the prophets, absolutely. So this is a story that follows um, a few slaves. I guess I should give you a sugar warning. If you do not like reading about slavery, this is not a book for you. There are some violent bits in it. But one thing that I did like about this book is it was not trauma porn. Um, I feel like often books about slavery are in fact that they are trauma porn. It's just the a long story about black people being hurt whereas this stay true to history um but it didn't focus so much on their lives as as slaves so it's about they call themselves the stolen it is about william kato um pandora Xander and some other slaves that live on a plantation that goes by the name of uh, it don't really matter to be honest because I don't remember but their owner's name is Cannonball Green so the story starts off with William when he's a young boy we um meet him when he is with his I'm going to say his original thief um, because they call the slaves stolen. They call the owners thieves. Accurate. So he's with his original thief, um, the plantation owner of the plantation that he was born on. And he's a terrible slave owner, um, thief. He is mean. He does not manage his money well. That whole bit, right? And they are going into town into a place where there's an opportunity for him to maybe get more slaves um but they're all children and the children were left there there's a story behind it it's really sad um long story short to not spoil the whole thing for you um Xander uh, William ends up getting picked up by another slave owner because he saves a white boy from a horse that almost trampled him so William is known as this good upstanding stolen right he the the way that they describe him um puts me in the mind of I want to say Idris Elba um because of Idris Elba's stature um I, that's what it kind of put me in the mind of and he's quiet but he's very very smart he's good with animals he's he's this like big strapping man and because of the scenario of the day that he becomes the property of Cannonball Green he does not want to have children of his own 
Um, but he also knows that he has to do what he has to do in order to survive. So once it tells his story, we are on Canopy, can Canopy, Cannonball Green's plantation, and he has this a whole bunch of land and the plantations are kind of separated into different ones so the one that um William lives on he lives with a few other stolen there and they it's him so it's William Kato Xander um and a few other ones that live right there because they are cannonballs not necessarily his favorites but he's doing some sort of study so he feels like he is going to I don't know like crack the code on why black people are the way that they are like he does all of these experiments and so on and so forth so throughout the story it's them coexisting amongst themselves but I think what I really enjoyed about this is William and all the other characters that we meet they have personality um I feel like often we read about um we read historical fiction that's about slavery and it's very much focused on the hurt and not necessarily the person. So I think for a long time, learning about slavery, I never really was able to picture them as people, right? They All I knew of them was their hurt. And granted, it was a lot of hurt, but, but underneath that, they had thoughts, they had ideas, they had values, they had morals, they had all of these things, which is why I stress diversifying your reading, right? Because the only thing that we've known of Black people for so long is all of this hurt that we carry on from all the many different traumas that are thrown at us and not necessarily who we are as people. So like, for example, William and Margaret, they were paired together. They're, su they're supposed to breed, right? But William is very much like, I don't want to do this because, yes, I love this woman. Yes, I want to, to procreate with her, but I don't want to bring a baby into the world that is like this, right? And there were so many different things that like their thief would say like oh love y'all don't know anything about love or you know just this idea that <laughs> love was such a, a concept that was beyond you know the stolen it was beyond them but they they were smart right so after we meet William we meet Kato who is like a brother to William um but Kato is he learned how to read at his previous the previous plantation that he was on um and he had learned how to read this book that was all about being like an upstanding man and about etiquette and all of this stuff so that's how he lives his life right a man should do certain things a woman should do certain things you always have to be polite you always have to be upstanding again showing them as human right like he 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 had a way of life he he had to live his life a certain way um which led to why he handled things the way he handled things right he he wanted to be a man's man at the end of the day so why can't I remember his name? Probably because I hated him. But there was a... Um, hold on one second. There was a... Another stolen that... Lived what's his name Cupid that lived amongst them who was kind of like their overseer right and yes his name was Cupid Cupid was an asshole excuse my language if y'all let y'all children watch my videos which I don't know why but anyway um 
Cupid was an asshole, but Cupid was an asshole because of the things he had experienced. And they said, I think a, another thing that I liked about this book before I get into Cupid's backstory, um, they talked a lot about spirituality and about the like the superstitions that we carry on, right? So when Cupid was young, he witnessed a murder of a fellow stolen when he was a boy and some of the blood splashed in his eye. So the rumor about him was, oh, his he got blood in his eye. That's why he act the way that he do. That's why he's a bit crazy, which in grander schemes means he's experienced this trauma. He's traumatized. That is why he is the way that he is. Um... Which makes me consider superstitions a little bit differently, right? Because on on a grander scheme, right, you hear, oh, he got blood in his eye. How how do you how do you internalize that? As it, it you could take it literally, right? As oh, he literally got blood in his eye. Maybe the blood seeped into his brain and and whatever, whatever. Or you can take it for face value of he got blood in his eye what caused him to get blood in his eye does that make sense because if you got blood in your eye right it could have been some sort of head trauma it could have been whatever whatever but he got blood in his eye so cupid was an ass he abused his wife right um cannibal their thief used him as a fighter so he would be put into rings to fight other stolen um to win cannibal money and because he had one cannibal money he was the only um stolen that was able to live with his wife quote unquote and he abused her he had night terrors um i think it's the first time that i remember recognizing what slavery did to the slaves which is ptsd right um because often in today's world when someone goes to the army and they come back a sign of ptsd is like them having nightmares and abusing their lovers or their partners at night because they can't get out of the dream like that what that's what was happening to cupid right but cupid was mean and the only person that he did not try was william everybody else was fair game but he was afraid of william because william carried himself in a way so there was a little boy that lived amongst them, Xander, and Xander believed that he could fly um, and all of this stuff. So Xander was doing something and Cupid was picking at him and William was like, not tonight. And Cupid challenged him and they get to fighting and um, they they going at it. And I didn't think William was going to make it out of their lives, but Kato, who does not like Cupid for other reasons um comes and they end up killing they end up killing Cupid right so now they have this secret <sighs> they bury Cupid and now they have to figure out how they're gonna get through this because Cupid did and that ain't a good thing that Cupid is dead so next day Cannibal is looking for for Cupid, of course, they whip Cupid's wife because, of, of course, she knows something, but she doesn't. Um, and it's this long, drawn-out thing, um, which leads to a lot of other stuff, right, that happens and leads to them wanting to run, right? Now, a part of them wanting to run is this preacher. And they, the book touches on the Underground Railroad, but in a way that's different. Um, they call it the Chariot, which I had never heard it referred to that, that way before. Um, and people helping um, others on the Chariot were called conductors. So this pastor, who was a traveling pastor, um, that William did not trust comes and does you know he preaches to them but then he does like a separate ceremony um or sermon in the woods that's more geared towards um the spirituality of africans and the things that they brought over from africa um and that is how he teaches them that they can go and live on this land 
that is full of black people that are free and it's their own land and all of this other stuff so long story short they get together William Kato Xander Pandora who is a house slave who Kato is in love with um and they run away and their journey is treacherous but I think it is a I feel like the story was different because it's like you have the group of them that believe that they can do this and then you have William who is a bit of a cynic and who is um just he just knows something bad is going to happen <laughs> right like he just knows that the preacher is 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 a liar a cheat and ain't nothing good coming from listening to him it it was so so intriguing I the 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 writing the the character development the the overall story like it really had me on the edge of my seat like I was reading this book like I don't want to put it down like I need to go back to I need to go back with my people like we on the run like I need to be with them but I think the thing that stood out to me the most is that they needed each other as much as um they tried not to build these bonds because anybody could be sold at any day at any second or whatever they needed each other and how powerful it is to need someone else even when you're afraid and you're unsure and you don't know what's going to happen there's power in that um and knowing that you're not really alone and that you know things can work out right you you need you need each other um so I won't I won't spoil the end I've, I've, I've spoiled some other things for you I won't necessarily spoil the end there is a twist in here that I guess if you've read a lot of historical fiction that's about slavery then it may be something that you can guess but overall I think my favorite favorite part of this book is the fact that the characters were very 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 human they weren't just slaves now there is a bit I, I don't want to call it magical realism but there's a bit of magical realism in here that I wish would have I, I wish it would have been more um I wish it would have been more because I think much like um the book of night women how they spoke on the magic and all of that like there is a bit of that in here that that I wanted more of <laughs> it was it was like just a uh, just a touch and I was like give give me more give me more the, it, it, that's the only thing if I had to change anything about this book and I mean it, the magical real, realism shows up um and I guess it's not really magical realism because it was actually a person, um, but it could have been more. That would be the only thing that I would have changed about it. They did tie it up pretty good. Um, Jabari Asim tied that section of the book up pretty well, but I wanted it to be more. Okay, now it is a bit of a tearjerker. I did not cry, but it did hurt my feelings a little bit in here, so pace yourself for that but overall I would absolutely recommend this book um I did my intentions were to do a reading vlog I do have some clips so maybe I will put that in here at this point so this video will be kind of long um but or maybe not don't don't hold me to that I may or may not if I do you'll know if not you won't it, you'll know either way um so that you can see kind of like my reactions as I was as I was reading it um but overall I recommend this book I feel like this is one of those books that everybody should read um and if you enjoyed the water dancer if you enjoyed the prophets then you definitely definitely will enjoy yonder by Jabari Sim. so before you go, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share. Um, I'm still on the road to a thousand subscribers. Every little bit helps. So, um, without further ado, if no one has told you today, I love you.
Bye, guys.